So Vulcan back. Just have a beautiful afternoon here. And we are moving on. So we have now done the third category, which is uh, friend. And it's good to hear the feedback of how that's going for everyone. And for some of you, it's going very well. And there are times when, you know, the meta is flowing and you really touch something a bit meaningful and you're in that space where you can feel some of that sort of deeper emotion coming through and it is joyful. And then for some of us or for all of us at some time, there's other times when it's a little bit dry and there's nothing really coming up. You're going through the steps, but nothing is really coming up. And then there's also, you know, for all of us at some point of time, the actual meta practice brings up, you know, difficult uh, emotions that we have to deal with. And so, you know, that's where we can come unstuck. So I want to again, uh, keep talking on that and give even more suggestions so that you have, you know, a great flexibility of working with uh, difficulties as they come up and caring for oneself that you can use uh, or you can teach to others because what works for one person doesn't work for another and what works for you this time may not work next time. <clears throat> so first of all in this practice what I want to say is that very rarely is everything you know going wrong all at once. If you're truthful in any condition there are some difficulties and there are some uh, nice parts of the situation. So, you know, even uh, in any moment, wh whether you're freezing cold uh, or you're boiling hot or whatever, and you think, oh, this is a terrible situation. Actually, there are some uh, nice aspects to it. You know, it might be freezing cold, um, but there might be a fresh smell in the air. Or you might be bored stiff, but, you know, there's a, there's a nice quietness in the air or you, you see a butterfly. There's always something good there, okay? Same with people. You know, we like to pigeonhole people and they're, they're a lovely person and they're a horrible person. And, and this one, we look at the horrible person and we see uh, all the horrible things in because we don't want to be proved wrong, so our mind makes up, you know, negative stuff to pigeonhole them into this place. But it's very rarely the case, if we're honest with ourselves, there's always some nice aspects of people, some nice aspects of, of situations. So in, in a meditation session, it's the same. So you might be feeling, oh, my meditation is going terribly wrong. Um, it's, nothing's working for me. Um, I can't do this meditation. I might as well pack up and go home. What's the point? But if we look carefully, there are some negative aspects, but there are some not so negative aspects as well. And there might even be some quite nice aspects if we look hard enough. But the human psyche really has an overwhelming uh, you know, tendency to look at what's going wrong. I guess they believe if they can fix what's going wrong, then everything will be well. You know, I actually saw research that said that actually humans in general are quite optimistic, far more optimistic than um, what we generally believe. But in any single circumstance, there is this tendency to focus on what's going wrong and again, my guess, and psychologists might you know, tell me wrong, 
is with this feeling that, well, if I can focus on what's annoying me the most and fix it, then I will, uh, you know, feel better and you know, all my troubles will go away. But we know that's never the case. So in meditation, one key technique or uh, way of coping with difficulties is to not lean in to the difficulties, but alternatively, lean in to what is lovely and accept the difficulties and just leave them. Because if we trust that even difficulties are impermanent, they're going to disappear with or without our help. And so even though you might have you know, pain in the shoulder and, and in the back and you've got a headache and, and various, if you can sort of lean in to the nice feeling in your knee you know, or in your foot, um, this choosing to uh, concentrate on the more lovely aspects can be a very nice resource that you can use sometimes to get yourself out of or deal with more difficulty and make that which is lovely grow because you know what as I say where the mind goes energy flows or something like that or anyway what you concentrate on can sometimes manifest more so if you worry about the difficulties then aversion is going to ra rise and you know we you know the equation pain plus times aversion equals suffering so if we reduce the aversion even the pain is quite understandable one way to do that is concentrate on the loveliness and the more energy you put there the more it flows so uh, lean in to into that loveliness now another cause of difficulty is an underlying fear so sometimes there might be some pain and you know there's also aversion and fear there we have fear opening up to that pain so be aware of this because sometimes the fear of opening up can be what's making the difficulty worse and if we remove that fear of you know at least acknowledging that pain then we can accept it and then we can move on to what is lovely yeah so in being able to sort of just leave the pain sometimes we need to acknowledge the fear that is around the pain uh, which is the difficulty that we're we're doing so one way to do this uh, is if you are being with the uh, difficulty and you've been with the difficulty for some time and it's not leaving you can sort of drop in the question is being with this difficult thing helping is it actually helping me in this very moment and if you're ruminating on a subject and you're not getting anywhere it's not helping so drop that question in and that can help you decide you know whether it's okay to be with it acknowledge it and then and then drop it but not in the sense that we drop it in an aversion type of way just let it be there accept it and move on to concentrate on something more lovely. Okay, then I mentioned earlier, another way is to sort of, uh, well, first of all, to be more spacious. So another thing with pain and difficulty is not only do we concentrate on it, but we wrap our mind around it tightly so that that's the only thing that exists. And we, our conscious mind blocks out everything else. Uh, again, this is attention. This is putting attention on it and forgetting about awareness. So you're now concentrating on what I'm saying and in doing that, in placing that focus on what I'm saying, you are less aware of the temperature of the room and the feeling of the mats that you're sitting on and the 
sounds of maybe birds outside or, or whatever. So in the difficulty, if you can go into awareness and create a sense of spaciousness, then that helps to start with. And then in addition, try to sort of allow yourself to within that spaciousness bring meta around the difficult situation and i've talked about that maybe sort of surrounding it with meta and then as i said um rob bayer whom i i've really taken most of this teaching from uh came up with seven suggestions so i like them and i thought i'd relay relay them to you now Seven suggestions on dealing what is difficult. So the first one, say it's okay. It's okay. And what that does is it's okay for the moment. Again, I mentioned earlier, rather than look through the infinite stretches of time and our pain, just accept what is going on at the moment by just saying it's okay. Okay, so that's number one. Second one, Feeling and knowing that this is dukkha. So the Buddha talked about this word dukkha, which is his word for suffering or unsatisfactoriness, and said that all beings in all of samsara or all of life uh, are experiencing dukkha of various kinds. And just realizing this is the nature of life is, is dukkha is arising. And, uh, you know, this is the work that we have, have to do. This is the work that all beings have to do, is to work and understand Dukkha. So, first noble truth, um, that suffer, suffering exists, suffering is, uh, is prevalent. So that's number two. Um, number three, acknowledge that this is my Dukkha, okay? So... You know, um, this is my dukkha and something that is, you know, I have to work with and is for the time being a part of purification. So stuff is happening just by experiencing that dukkha. Now, the, another one that's really helpful, number four, is reflecting that somewhere, right now, someone else is going through exactly the same difficulty as me. So another thing which tends to make us depressed is to think we're the only one. We're the only one. No one else has got problems as big as me. Okay? Or I'm the only one with this particular type of problem. And again, if we use our logic mind, there's nine billion people. We know we're wrong. Somewhere is having exactly the, the same problem as me. And there are millions of people which are having other problems but even worse even worse so again it puts a sense of spaciousness and perspective on everything so it's number uh, four number five uh, if how would you respond if someone else say a young child was having the same difficulty that you were doing how would your heart go out to them how would you uh, cradle them if they were having that difficulty and then cradle that, that difficulty within you with that same sense of love. So number five is how would you respond if a child had this type of suffering? Okay, number six is that all mental activity is reflected one way or another in the body. And the body has an enormous impact on the mind as well. Mind and body are, you know, in a sort of a cybernetic loop. The mind affects the body, the body affects the mind. And so if, this is one we use in NLP a lot, is we explore, okay, I've got this difficulty, but where is it manifesting in the body? And describe it in very... Uh, sense-based language, like I can feel it as a vibration in my lower torso, which is expanding and contracting and has a warmth and has a texture 
of sandpaper and I'm just making this up and it even sounds like um, you know a concrete mixer and it looks like it's a big lead balloon uh, you know what I mean so describe it in sensory based equipment and then physically either visualize you just letting it go or soften the body around that area and work with the body so don't try to intellectually work out your problem see it as a physical kind of a physical thing and then work with the body just relaxing the muscles around that part letting it go yeah, visualizing it disappearing and being replaced with light okay number six and number seven is uh, the last one is uh, if we find it hard to cradle this love or to let it go ask yourself gently what is preventing me from cradling this difficulty and notice if there is some judgment there so a lot of times it will be judgments that are beneath the surface that are holding some of these or partly the reason for holding these things in place you know what am i judging what what is what is judgments a very harsh mistress um, in fact uh, i got interviewed after i did my long retreat and they interviewed me and they said, what's, what's been the biggest change in you since doing your retreat? And I had to think long and hard about it. And the answer I came up with, this was when I was in my late 30s. No, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, I said, I felt, I said, I just judge less. You know, when I see someone, I don't go, you know, they're a good person or a bad person, you know, they can help me or they can't help me or this. I just sort of see them as a person. I still remember that sort of question. Um, and with that less judging becomes an enormous amount of freedom. And, and the worst judging is we judge ourselves and we judge what's going on. So uh, check out what judging. So, you know, seven different options for you to work with. Again, some of those are not going to work. Uh, but some of them, if you go through the list, you'll go, wow, that really helps with that particular difficulty. All right, so <clears throat> the next thing is when emotions come up. So when particular emotions come up, which is similar to difficulties, but slightly different. Emotions come up and they always have a story behind them. So again, inquire what that story is. Now, if you can, you might want to see the emptiness of that story and see it as a mental projection. Okay, because all stories are empty. They're mind fabricated creations. So if you can, you can let it go at that, uh, in that way. Otherwise, what we can do is we can try to reframe it and relate differently to the story. So see if you can relate it in a different way. And I talked about this at the end of the basic retreat. So you might remember that. Um, again, actually this is really another suggestion, is relate to these emotions as physic, physic, physical things. So see the emotion not as an emotion, but see it as a physical manifestation of the body. You know, it's certain, you know, this emotion is actually chemicals of our brain going somewhere in the body. And then try to release it, sort of as seeing it as a physical thing, release it, like I said, physically. Um, and as you do this time and time again, you know, it becomes clearer and clearer the constructive nature of emotion how emotions are constructed in our mind, in our body. Again and again, we look at the emotion, we, we try to defabricate it, and lo and behold, we can. We can defabricate it, which means that at some point, 
we fabricate it. And then when we're aware of the energy body, we see the very beginnings of a karmic seed come up and we see how we fabricate first of all a story and then an emotion around it. And over and over again we see this fabrication process going on and it leads us more and more into the insight aspect of the meditation practice, you know, through doing metta practice. And the more you do that, the easier it is to defabricate everything. So, yeah, uh, overall is don't get locked into black and white thinking. Always see things as being fabricated in the moment, flexible, changeable, impermanent, changing all the time. And it can change and will change. It has to change. Because the more you lock it into things are just, they're just this way, the more you say, well, the situation is just awful. That's just how it is. The more it will hold on for a longer period of time like that. Alright, so that's a, a little bit about some of the difficulties that are coming up. Uh, some of the issues uh, that might be coming up for people as well is at times people can uh, sort of say that it's easy to give but it's not easy to receive. So for whom is it easier to gift, give, give than, than who's having trouble actually receiving, either on this retreat, imagining receiving love, metta, um, or even just know from their own life, they find it difficult when people want to do things for them, even though you find it easy to, yeah, you can resonate with that. So why is that? Why is it, you know, difficult to, receive uh, or more more difficult to receive than to give yeah? so. Um, so this is something we need to work on because we should be able to receive meta as equally as we can when, uh, give it um, and the truth is we are receiving all the time so everything you own your watch the cushions you know you're receiving it all the time and so be aware of this that we're receiving um, all the time and a good one is we're receiving from nature you know we're receiving the air we breathe we're receiving the the sunlight uh, the rain everything we we are huge recipients of and be totally okay with that be totally okay with that that knowing that um we are receiving so much every second of life that we breathe in this world. Um, because, yeah, it's otherwise, you know, there's an issue that's going on if you find it's easy to give and to receive. But likewise, if you find it's easy to just receive what people give you and you don't want to give back, that's an issue too. So they should be equal. You know, you should be flexible in either way. In, and as I sort of said when I was talking about self, you'll find far from being selfish, if you're willing to receive and you fill your cup with gratitude, it will overflow as meta to all beings. So it's not like we need to drain our cup of every drop of meta um, by just giving everything away. We'll actually have more meta to give by filling ourselves up and being grateful for what we receive and being open to receiving from others um, than we will if we if we sort of oh no no I don't need that no 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 you take it no no you here let me help you which is, is good to a certain extent but there needs to be a balance there. All right, so we're moving on to neutral people. Okay, so these are um, people that that you you work with. 
uh, that are not maybe you know, not friends and family, uh, although this can uh, apply to everyone. So we now want to broaden out the range of our meta to give to sort of anyone or anything. We're going to save difficult people to last, so we'll put them uh, aside for the time being, but generally this is anyone, could be complete strangers. Can you um, involve meta to people you know little of? Um, another point actually here is, again, that we can, we've talked about difficulties, we've talked about difficulties, but also there can be other emotions come up when you're doing uh, meditation practice, uh, which are not difficult emotions, uh, but other emotions. An example here is sexual feelings towards other people. You might be having meta, and then you feel some sort of attraction that way. Again, there's sort of nothing wrong with that, um, and to sort of go into denial, oh, this, this can't be so, um, we're not going with the flow. So we're just working with whatever comes up at any one time. But interestingly, to deal with those types of feelings of desire in any way, it could be sexual, it could be desire in another way, again, many of those same tips that we use with difficult emotions uh, can apply to that. So again, uh, like just see it as a sort of a physical energy and realize it's energizing and work with it in the body and sort of transform it uh, because meta can come in many different forms, many different guises. And not only that, you can transform, transform any energy into any other type of energy. So eventually, even having, you know, difficult emotions, you can transform anger into compassion. You know, you can transform uh, jealousy into well-wishing of abundance for everyone. Same, you, any, any positive emotions like desire, you can transform into a, a sort of meta of, of well-wishing. So at this stage, anything like that, just see it as a beautiful life energy that is flowing through us rather than feeling any sort of guilt or shame uh, that you might, might feel, really due to cultural conditioning. It's really due to cultural conditioning that we're sort of told, you know, we're not allowed to have those particular feelings. So as we broaden out to more and more people, okay, what happens is it's difficult to stir any emotion at all because they're neutral people, they're neutral for a reason. Well, you know, they're okay, but don't really love them, but don't really have difficulty with them. Um, so here we have another problem in trying to sort through their lovely features and, and sort of transform the negative, is they don't seem to have any features at all because they're, they're neutral. So we're that, this is when we really start to start doing our meditation and think about the butterflies and think about the, the pine cones and the, you know, animals in the ceiling and things like that because our mind kind of gets bored. There's nothing here to, to chew on. All right? So we need to, and then, very, and then it can cause sleepiness because obviously we're low on energy. So first of all, uh, we go back to equanimity. Like us, they are a person and their fundamental nature or their fundamental desire is that they want happiness and they want to avoid suffering. So start to feel that equanimity, okay? Again, the one thing which I'm amazed at, well, one thing that I'm amazed at as a life coach is I'll have professionals, like, you know, people who have high-flying jobs come to see me as a coach. And from the outside, they look like they've got everything together. They rock up in an expensive car, they've got a good job, they go on holiday to America and all of that. And anyone from the outside would think, you know, they've got their stuff together. But, you know, they're here for coaching, 
and lo and behold, we all know this, but they've got issues the same as everybody else. And when you do this enough time, you realise that when you walk down the street, every single person that is passing you on the street has problems. You know, they all have issues that they're dealing with. Um, and so contemplate that this neutral person is quite probably struggling just as much as me and just as much as anybody else. So again, we're trying to kind of take this neutral person and put it into context and know that all human beings are in the struggle that they are dealing with difficulties and they desire happiness. Okay? And, you know, we have to imagine sometimes or uh, this is where we start to use our projection and we project the lovely qualities onto them and that's okay uh, in order to develop a sense of meta towards them and know that they're, they're struggling. Um, and really the last point here, uh, which I'll get into a little bit more and I'll just sort of start making this point, is there is a difference between compassion and meta, okay? So, compassion and meta are very much align, and we can have great compassion for someone and really want them to be happy. But, of course, compassion really is dealing with people's difficulties, and if you're not careful, and if you're not sufficiently full yourself, you can be pulled down into that depression. And the whole idea of metta is to remain upbeat, buoyant, happy. We want to develop a sense of happiness in ourselves. And we need to develop that first before we actually really go into incredibly difficult emotions dealing with difficult people. If you are worn out and if you're particularly, if you're sort of depressed or whatever in yourself, you're not going to give your best to uh, people that have really strong difficulties. So we have to be careful and watch that we ourselves are staying sufficiently buoyant, you know, but like the surgeon has to be equanimitous and has to be positive even though he may be dealing with a very difficult uh, operation it could be could go to pieces because of the sadness of the situation so uh, just a, a, a warning I guess a little warning at this stage is just be careful when you're moving more into the compassion side of meta that you're not sort of getting into the space of too much compassion where there's a bit of downward uh, feeling uh, in you. Because um, the idea of this meta retreat is to, to have lots of meta so that we remain buoyant. And I'll be talking about that a little bit more tonight as well. Any questions on the neutral people? Well, the challenge is really developing meta in the first place. Okay. So, um, yeah, because we see a neutral person and it doesn't really inspire us one way or the other. So it's how can we have, you know, we've been dealing with friends and we can use them to feel buoyant, to feel a sense of love. How do you do that with a neutral person? You know, it's not initially, it's not, and not easy but the what we're practicing here is meta has this sense of boundlessness mm -hmm. so we need to be able to see a perfect stranger and have as much love for them as we do with our dearest uh, you know our dearest member you know, how do you do that it's not immediately obvious and most people would say well it can't be done of course you love your family more than you love a stranger um, but according to Buddhism, we can develop a sense of love towards all beings. You know, we can love trees as much as people. 
you know, because you know, they're, they're sentient or animal. Not hard, actually. Some people find loving animals easier than loving humans. Um, but here we're kind of working towards neutral people to see if we can actually engender a sense of really wishing that they could be happy, really wishing that if they had any suffering, that they could have peace and respite from that suffering, that they can be safe and protected and have kindness, even though we don't even know them. And that will broaden and make our metta boundless so that we eventually walk continuously in a bubble of metta. By the way, I think we should be using our, you know, give, we should be giving metta to one another. I mean, we're somewhere between neutral and friends, you know, we've just met each other and we're becoming friends very quickly, but, you know, we can use that because obviously, you know, I think it is more powerful if they are really with you. doesn't mean you can't do metta mm -hmm. with imaginary you know, people, but um, it's powerful if they're with each other. So I wish you kindness. I wish you happiness. I wish you to be safe, prosperous, joyful. And I wish you to be peaceful and enjoy your practice. <laughs>